Hello again, campers. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, last time about uh, different types of food to bring. Of course, a little recap. Uh, dried food works probably the best nowadays. One little extra thing about uh, meals. Uh, as you're going in for your trip, what I've done in the past, I've taken a piece of uh, meat, whether it's chicken or steak or what have you, I've frozen it, put it in a plastic bag, wrap it up tight uh, in a towel, maybe some clothing, and bury it right down deep into the clothing bag, and it'll stay frozen down there for, for quite a while. When you get to your uh, campsite, you're all set up, and you can uh, prepare your meal. So, as you see, I've got some things here uh, some stoves and such and I'd like to talk to you about just that preparing your meal now that you are uh, got your stuff all set up in camp and you got your food barrel all set up and maybe that uh, piece of chicken or steak that you got with you personally I like using the open fire the campfire using the fire grate that's provided there for you at the campsite uh, I like that I prefer that. It's more of the uh, reason I'm there, cooking on the open fire, camping along the lakeside. But I do bring a backup system. And there's several here, and I'm going to talk to you just a few minutes about, uh, about these. Uh, I take a backup system in case it is raining for s several days, maybe. Uh, you can use a back the backup stove on your uh, portage trail if you need to make a hot soup or something to that effect. But it is a good idea, I believe, to bring some type of a backup uh, cooking system and uh, make sure that it's not too big and make sure that it's going to be effective, efficient enough. Uh, you'll see here in front of me a little stove. That's what this is. It's a little stove, folds all up real nice and small, and here's a little fuel can that goes with it. Now, set up your stove, lock it in place, put your little fuel in there, light your stove, set your pan on there, and you're, you're good to go. Uh, how sturdy is it? You'll have to experiment. How strong is it? There again, you'll have to experiment before you even take it out in the field. Bounty orders. Um, so practice, make sure it's, it's adequate. Make sure it's strong enough. This is one type of stove. Not very big, folds up, not, not very heavy, a few ounces. That's, that's one type. Here's another type of stove that I use. Get your pot in your frying pan way up on the top. Now, it looks good and it is good, but you should be aware of some things. As you notice, the pot is up on top. Not every place is going to be flat smooth, well balanced. So if you've got your food uh, in your pot and this thing tips over, you're going to be out of luck. <laughs> Have to start over again. So for myself, what I like to do, I will use this system, but I don't worry too much about the base. What I'll do is I'll, I'll dig a hole in the ground put the can or the bottle right in the ground, now it's nice and solid. Or I will stack up rocks around it there too, holding it in place to, to do the job that you need to do. You don't want it tipping over. So it, it's a good little stove. Uh, it gets hot pretty fast. It doesn't take much. Good hot little flame. Goes real fast. You notice I got a pair of gloves here. The gloves should be part of your cook kit as well. Uh, it's pretty hard to cook over an open fire or 
grab these pots and pans with your bare hands. And you're not going to have a hot pad off the kitchen stove. Uh, you could, I guess, but I like to just use my gloves. So very small, very lightweight. Make sure you've got enough uh, fuel for your, uh, for your needs. If uh, you think you're going to be using the stove in a lot of bad weather, do some practicing. See how long the bottle will, will last you while you're preparing your meals. Another thing to keep in mind, the quicker the meal is prepared, the less fuel you use. So when you're looking at the meal items, packaging, check to see how long it takes for this item to, to be ready to eat. You'd be surprised, some of it's 45, 50 minutes of, of a simmer. Now that's a long time to set on the stove and, and, and use your fuel. So be aware of that. Uh, sometimes it's just bring the water to boil, add it to the food, let it hydrate, and you're ready to eat. It's hot and ready to go. 12 minutes. So do some calculating there. So good little unit, one burner at a time. Uh, it, I, I've used it. But I prefer a bigger stove, like this one here. It's a two burner stove. The uh, bottle hooks onto the side pretty easily. Two burner stove. Uh, maybe I'm frying a fish. Maybe I'm heating water for potatoes or vegetable or tea or something to that effect. But I, I prefer the two burner stove. Now you'll see that this particular stove does not have wind wings or wind protection like this older style stove. You can get newer type stoves that have those wind shields, wind protection built in it. But for myself, I opt for this one without the wind shields. I will use my frying pans and frying pan lids for the windshields, maybe some rocks. It'll just cut down on the weight as opposed to bringing more metal with you. So small two burner stove, thin, low volume, easy to deal with. My stove that I use, what I have done is I have, I take this grate off, I drill two more holes to line up so that when I pack it away, it's, it's in underneath. Less volume, a little more room if you're looking for room. Sits right on top. Easy, easy to do. Now you'll see I've got a metal cup here. A lot of people might think that a metal cup that's pretty nice, you can just keep it on the stove, keep your cocoa, coffee, tea, whatever it is, nice and warm. Well, it does do that. But one thing you're gonna remember is if it's sitting on the stove, that metal is gonna get hot. You're not gonna be able to touch it with your bare hands. And you're not gonna be able to touch that with your bare lips. How do I know these things? <laughs> well, experience, you learn well. So, maybe not the best idea, a metal cup. Uh, you can certainly take one with you for measuring or just drinking out of, uh, but if you're using a metal cup, your hot coffee, co and cocoa, and tea will cool off uh, fairly rapid as well. So, we like to bring a, a little insulated thermos cup that we use, glass or uh, cup. So a little thing to remind yourself of that. You will notice that uh, there's some working items on this cook stove and they've got some pretty small holes that the gas comes out of. Protect these from getting in the dirt, getting in the water, 
because those little orifices can get a very small piece of dirt in them. Now your stove is not going to work. Same with the bottle, the gas bottle. There are caps that come with them. Make sure that you use those to keep the dirt out because it can bring your cooking to an end. Now you'll see that on the table I've got a, an item here. It, uh, it's for filling your little bottles and you can do that. I've done it. Do a little research. It too has some little small holes that need to be kept clean and dry so you don't have to keep buying these for seven, eight dollars or whatever they are now. Um, I refill them myself. <clears throat> I'm not telling you to do it, but if that's something you want to look into, you certainly can. Now, I, like I said, I like to uh, I like to cook my meals on the open fire. Now, starting your fire can be a problem, and you've probably heard many times, look for birch bark, look, look for birch bark. Well, what I have found is something a little easier, something that you're always going to have with you, and it's just cotton balls with a little petroleum jelly worked in. Now, I bring a little bag of this with me, a good little fire starter. I'll find my twigs, leaves, dried items, uh, red evergreen branches, uh, things like that. And I will uh, prepare my, my, my cook fire in the grate and I will use my little petroleum cotton balls as a fire starter. It lights quick and it holds the heat on your small twigs and grass or whatever you might be using to help get your fire started. So if you don't think you like the idea of cooking with fire all the time because it's hard, uh, do some research and you'll see that uh, not only this little fire starter, but maybe some others that you can uh, put together yourself. And I know that they do sell them, but uh, I like to make my stuff so I know what I've got. A little fire starter will go a long way in making that fire starting and fire cooking a lot less trouble and a lot more fun. And that's what we want. We want fun, we want enjoyment, and to experience it. I know to try and start a fire uh, looking for birch bark all the time, you might not be in a place where you're, you're going to find birch bark. Birch bark, it, it burns well, it'll burn if it's wet, it holds the heat, there's some oils in it, and it helps with uh, the kindling and, and moving the fire on up the uh, food chain, so to speak. So uh, if you can't use uh, what birch bark you find on the ground, you certainly don't want to strip it off trees. And you can tell when you uh, get to the campsites that it's happened. The trees have got black bands around them from people stripping the birch bark off the trees. It'll kill the tree. Let's not do that. So I, br I bring a little uh, petroleum jelly and cotton ball. And that's what I use for fire starter to cook all my meals on the open fire. And it only takes me a few minutes to make my meal. Probably a half hour to start the fire get the water boiling, get the fish to frying, and I'm eating in about 30 minutes. I don't use big chunks of wood. I use small pieces of wood about the size of your fingers and thumb. It's hot, it's quick, gets the job done, the fire's out. So here's again a little demonstration of what these little, they light real quick, they burn real nice, and I'll probably set off a fire alarm in the house because of this. So, time to say goodbye. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>